Hello guys, how are you? It is me and my wine again. You know what time it is. It's Wine Wednesday. So um, as always, I'm going to share out before I get started. And I'm gonna try and do this before it starts to rain because it actually, I'm outside on my porch and it looks like it's gonna start to pour any minute. So <laughs> this should be interesting. Um, I'm sharing onto my business page, um, Sunny Gandera. Uh, please follow me there if you haven't already um, and also to my group Plant Empowered Bon Vivants and then we will get started. Um, let's see if you're there, please say hello. We have a good topic today. I think I'm going to do some more practical um, topics going forward um, also because I feel like there are some basic things that people want to know and um, I haven't covered yet. So one of them is what if you're on a budget? And even me, uh, who is always looking for bargains, um, not bargains necessarily, but looking for new wines, I can't always afford to spend, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars on a bottle, especially if you drink quite often, <laughs> like I do. So, um, you know, the more thrilling thing to me, I think, it's always easy to find a good bottle of wine when you're spending a lot of money. But what the most thrilling thing to me is actually to find an amazing value, say anywhere between 10, 15, 20 dollars. That's like, wow, you know, I've really found this treasure, right? So um, I want to go through to, uh, with you today five tips on what you can do to find great bargains wherever you are in the world. And then um, I'm going to show you what I picked um, and tell you a little bit about that and take any questions you might have. Of course, if you're watching the replay, please do tell me hello um, there as well. Hi, Lynn. Thanks for popping in. And I um, will just start right away. And if you have any questions, particularly around what I'm talking about, of course, just shoot. So um, the one thing that might not be so obvious and I live in wine country I live in uh, the Hudson Valley so we have a lot of vineyards here not too far and I've often found that they are inexpensive um, so my first tip is to check out your local wine scene and you might think there's no wine here especially maybe if you're in Norway that would be difficult difficult because I'm from Norway and I know that it's very few vineyards there now because of course it's located so north and it's too cool although there are some cool vineyards going on uh, but they're very young but say if you live in the United States there are actually if you didn't know there are grapes grown in every one of the 50 states in the United States so um, check out your local wine scene they're often cheaper because why of course um, you don't have to pay for long transportation you can go directly to the winery and you can actually buy directly from the winery so you cut out the middleman so check out your local wine scene here in New York of course we have the Hudson Valley where I live there's a lot of fun hybrid varieties. There are uh, a lot of great wines coming out of this region. Of course, Finger Lakes, which is about three hours north. And then you have Long Island, um, which also have fabulous Cab Francs, Chardonnays, and sparkling wines. So check out your local wine scene. Um, don't, don't sort of poo-poo that because there might be some real nice gems. Um, and then number two, I always say, is to and two and three are sort of connected together number one is to go and check hi Shannon thanks for joining um, go for the unusual grape varieties um, so if you always went for California Chardonnay from Napa you're gonna pay a lot for it um, or if you went from Pinot Noir from Burgundy right so those those very well-known Chardonnay Pinot Noir um, Cabernet Sauvignon Syrah you know everybody knows them but what about researching some really like off the grid grape varieties because they often come to this country at least um, if they have some interesting qualities and you pay a lot less because there's not a lot of demand for it yet. So it just makes sense, right? Um, people are not requesting it so they are trying to sell it so they will get it, you know, give it to you at a reasonable price. And that is also my tip number three, not just unusual grape varieties, because you could do, for instance, uh, an unusual grape variety from a region that only produces Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, and you could say, oh, let's try the Syrah, and the Syrah might not be so expensive, but go for an unusual region. Um, you know, things like places like Portugal isn't so unusual, but I have a Portuguese wine today, a specific wine from Portugal, which I will actually go over with you. Uh, but unusual wine regions, they don't need to be unusual, but they can be Eastern uh, Europe, right? Uh, Georgia has some fantastic orange wines, for instance. Um, you could go for um, uh, Tasmanian sparkling wines. Uh, you know, there are some like crazy places they play, they really produce wonderful wines. And the best way to find this out, of course, you could ask me, 
uh, pop in a question in my group or on my page or you can ask your local wine shop your restaurants is there anything unusual that you're really excited about and typically those are um, of a lower price at a lower price point so those are the two uh, one and uh, two and three go for unusual grape varieties go for unusual wine regions and um, we are blessed at least here in New York to have so many different titles from all over the world so um, and um, pretty much all across the world now where the world is getting smaller so go to the best wine shop you know um, there's also of course online wine shopping that you can uh, resort to as well number four is um, related to wine shops and that is look for bargains how do you look for bargains I was a wine buyer for a wine shop for over three years and what we did sometimes we wanted to close out they call close out sorry this, um, Time for uh, I guess everyone's coming home from work right now so it's pretty, pretty loud on the street here um, so we have closeouts either on vintages we're trying to get rid of because we want to bring in the new vintage of a wine but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the wine we're just trying to get rid of inventory um, or maybe we want to get rid of some wines that for some reason didn't sell that doesn't mean it's a bad wine it's just that some people don't get it some people don't get good wines what's the matter baby it's nachos very um, local today and um, you know do some research there are often some great bargains um, there's also sites with flash uh, sale on wine um, and you can also buy box wines in shops so if you have poo pooed box wine they may have been of bad quality before but actually there's some really great uh, box wines now and what that why that is a good bargain is there might be a little higher price point than a bottle but that's because you find sometimes four bottles in a box and the box ones keep a lot longer so you can keep that for a couple of weeks and with no problem maybe even a month whereas a bottle when you open it it will you know basically go bad in, in two um, days i'm gonna just excuse myself for two seconds and see what it's worried about So sorry thanks for hanging out still with me um, this is how it is to be a doggy mom you just have to go with the punches and I have a sick dog in a crate and two other dogs that haven't been walked really very well today so one of those days that's why I need a glass of wine <laughs> in any event so in wine shops like I said look for closeout sales uh, vintages that are um, older and also look for box wines number five so I'm zipping through this because I want to get to my wine is uh, in restaurants so sometimes, um, you know, some of the lesser expensive bottles, especially if it's a small list, is sort of the darling of the sommelier. Uh, something that he or she is trying to push um, and you get a great bargain. It doesn't mean that it's a bad wine just because it's an inexpensive one, but they're trying to entice people to buy it. Um, hi, Chashti. Hi, Stuart. Hi, Beatrice. Everyone that's signed on and off here. I don't know if you guys are all on. I can't see. but. Um, if you guys have questions, I'm going to just check and see that I don't have any questions. Um, and then um, someone wants to go for a walk, so he'll go for a walk after I finish here. Uh, so in restaurants, I would go for those, um, not the typical brand names, right? So you have those big brand names, um, you know, um, of course I'm going to come up with some crazy names that, you know, not uh, Romane, Domaine de la Romane Conti, something like that, because that's of course the most expensive one in the world. but you know something that you've heard of that everybody's buying it's bound to be a lot more expensive on a wine list it's like kind of buying a, a Fendi or a Gucci bag you know you pay for the brand not necessarily always the quality that could be just a, as a high of a quality other purse but it just doesn't have that brand and the same is with wine so look for those sort of up-and-coming um, uh, wineries maybe small family vineyards that don't have a lot of marketing budget to spend so it's really just you're just paying for the juice um, so uh, bonus tip is uh, buying quantities often stores give you discounts on six or twelve bottles um, so if you really particularly like one one wine buy a case or, or six bottles and just kind of disperse it throughout the year if it, um, there's so many you know uh, wonderful wines uh, out there and of course you know you don't go tired just after one bottle um, now my last tip is buying directly from the winery which I sort of uh, mentioned in point number one where I said research your local wine scene your local wineries um, because then you do cut out the middleman uh, and sometimes wineries can sell at a cheaper price with their farm license and it's also a great way to support your local farmers so those were my five tips 
One is research your local wine scene. Two, go for unusual grape varieties. Three, go for unusual wine regions. So don't just go to the same California, uh, Bordeaux, uh, Rioja. Try something different. Um, ask the people in the store or the sommelier in your restaurant. Number four is look for bargains in your wine shop, close out sales. And number five, uh, number four, uh, five, yes, in restaurants, go for the lesser expensive, weird sounding um, bottle. Ask your sommelier because sometimes that is something that he or she is really trying to push. And um, that brings me to my wine of the day. So I don't know if you can see it, but this is a fun looking bottle and it is from uh, Portugal and it is a Vinho Verde. Uh, many of you may have heard of it. It's very uh, popular to drink in the summertime because it's really light, it's refreshing. Um, it's really an unappreciated wine uh, that we should all be drinking more of and it's a perfect example of a quality wine that you can get at a really affordable price. Um, Vigno Verde typically is lower in alcohol um, and sometimes they have some a bit of a fizz or a spritz. Those, you can even get them down to like seven or six, seven, eight dollars a bottle. I, I actually paid eleven dollars for this. This isn't um, fizzy, uh, but it's a wonderful summer wine that you can serve as a daytime sort of daytime sipper as well as a great companion to lighter meals, um, salads and, and such. And Vinho Verde, what is it? It's a youthful wine, hence the name Verde, which is um, Portuguese or you know even Sp Spanish for green. Uh, and it's from Portugal's northernmost region of Minho. Um, and it's on sort of the northwest corner of the Atlantic coast, a bit south of Spain's Rias Baixas, where you can get really lovely albariños. If you haven't had albariño, I highly recommend that. It's a really nice citrusy mineral, um, high quality wine. Uh, Vigno Verde, it's a cool and wet region. It's very green, so it produces, unlike you know, a lot of the rest of the country, which can be in hotter and, and, and drier, uh, it produces these fresh, crisp, um, lighter style wines. And traditionally, uh, you know, Portuguese wines have always been made by blends, reds and whites. Uh, same with Vigno Verde, um, and it usually has any type of blend with uh, Asal, Arinto, Trejadura, uh, Lureiro, and Alvarinho. Uh, but more and more single varietal grape uh, wines are being made now and those are really the ones to look for. Lureiro, which this is um, actually, is a very old high quality grape that grows best in slightly warmer regions more inland of Lima uh, and they are really uh, capable of uh, producing more complex and ripe styles of Vigno Verde. So don't think Vigno Verde is just that sort of like watery spritzy wine. There are some that can be really high, uh, full bodied, complex, uh, some of them even aged in oak, although I don't necessarily always love those, it depends. Um, but I like them in sort of that youthful, um, fresh style. Uh, the single varietal, specifically uh, the specific sub-regions of Vigno Verde, I would look for on the bottle. So the more info you have on the bottle, the better. I would look for the word Escolia uh, on the label, which means choice, um, and that means that the wine has been rated as outstanding by the regional wine authority. So look for that, uh, it's always a good sign. So this guy, his name is um, Anselmo Mendes. He is uh, born and bred in the Monsao region in Portugal. So he's local, lived there his whole life, and he's one of the top winemakers in the region, uh, in Portugal. And he really familiarized himself with the culture of the vine and wine production. He focuses on the local Alvarinho variety, um, and he produ started producing wine in 1988. Uh, with Alvarinho grapes and since then he's really uh, become synonymous with Alvarinho. So when you hear Anselmo Mendes you think of um, Alvarinho right away. And he's been really lauded by critics uh, from across the wine world as one of the greatest wine makers, not just in Portugal but really um, worldwide and is uh, the most innovative producer of Vinho Verde. So even if I just paid $11 I get this really great winemaker and that's another um, tip I guess is that if you can't afford you know to buy a wine uh, a very famous wine of a famous wine producer typically these producers also have a baseline wine like this guy so I spent $11 here like his other ones aren't that expensive compared to say you know again Burgundy or, or other places but um, you get a sort of a, a taste of their winemaking style so it's an inch entry level 
an, a great opportunity to taste wines from wonderful winemakers. Um, so this is made from Loreiro, as I said. All grapes are hand harvested. They're fermented at a low temperature uh, for an extended period of time. And this wine is aged for about four months on the lease, which makes it a little more creamier, a little more textural. Um, and then um, this is kind of like, a, it has like a lemon, a sort of medium lemon, a little golden tint here. I'm trying to see what, um, vintage is 2017. Mm. Quite rich in the mouth. I wouldn't say it's light bodied. I would say it's verging on maybe medium bodied. Um, it's a little cold now, so they, they should be served cold, but sometimes they can be too cold. A um, little citrus, a little bit of tropical, like stone fruit maybe. Um, very crisp, high acid. Um, mm. Sharp, like a really refreshing acidity. It's like mouth-watering, you know? So I'm thinking here, I would want to pair it with, um, it's got a little herbaceous character too. So any type of like uh, herb, herbaceous dish, um, I'm thinking um, maybe I would want a, um, I'm trying to think like maybe a salad with some sort of high acid vinaigrette, um, you know, even a grain salad with some lemon dill dressing. Uh, I would go high, you know, it's really sort of heavy on herbs here. You could even do like a tomato basil um, salad with uh, some of me, I would always say Miyoko's mozzarella cheese. I like to actually throw in some of her smoked mozzarella in my uh, my tomato salad and I have tomatoes in the garden very light lighter fare definitely you could definitely do it with tacos and things like that but I wouldn't do too crazy uh, spice too much crazy spice with this um, something creamy would go well like cheeses like vegan cheeses like a goat style goat cheese style cheese something like that would go really well um, some type of like a rich oily dip I always uh, bring up the um, uh, uh, now of course I can't think of it but it's the eggplant dip that's really great um, any type of Middle Eastern sort of dips you know of course hummus things like that but that has a little bit of that creaminess and then this acidity in the wine really will cut through and really make it a fun fun combination uh, but really it's because of the high acidity it's very very food friendly um, and I would say just sip it as, as a um, hi Torelic how are you uh, sip it as a um, uh, a cocktail that's really like I don't I rarely sort of recommend that but this is just so refreshing and again it's not super low this is 12 and a half percent alcohol so this is a little more serious style even though it is only $11 the name of the wine is Passados I'll put it in the comments um, but do check out Vino Verde um, I think it's a really fun um, it can be anywhere from really easy drinking don't have to think about it to uh, a more serious wine that you're like wow why haven't I tried this wine before like I said before it's really an underrated wine uh, it's not just one style of wine look for the single varietal Vino Verdes typically from Alvarino or Loreiro and, um, and and test it out because this is really um, uh, very very surprising quality and uh, again um, Anselmo Mendes look for him as well so I'll put that in the comment I don't see any questions but I do thank everyone that popped up and said hello so I wish you a happy wine Wednesday I'm gonna go uh, walk some dogs now and I hope to see you next week for the same place uh, same time and with another different fun summer wine so cheers see you guys next week Bye.